What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, and welcome to another episode of The Portfolio. Here, we'll tackle the ongoing saga between Robinhood, an online financial firm, and rogue investors who have been driving up the stocks of shorted companies. In this incredible matchup, we'll be pitting together the common man as a challenger versus the heavy favorite Wall Street investors in the main event. Ding, ding. Just like Ali Frazier in the Thriller of Manila. Shout out to my Filipinos. There's so much to watch in this fight. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. But first, if you're just catching up, let's see what has happened and transpired thus far. The online forum Reddit is an online platform where users can discuss many topics. And in one particular forum called Wall Street Bets, which consists of discussions full of ideas for the next big trade to jump on, self-deprecation, and an appreciation of both winning and losing bets just as long as they're bold. A short is essentially like gambling, where you're betting that a company will underperform and then the investor can make money off the stock actually falling. In a short sale, they borrow a share of GameStop and then sell it. Later, if the stock price does as they expect, they can buy the stock at a lower price and then keep the difference. GameStop is one of the most heavily shorted stocks on Wall Street. Some have even called it the blockbuster of the video game industry. But small time investors weren't having it. They banded together, helping to raise the stock price of GameStop to stunning levels. This was a big F you to hedge fund bigwigs who lost billions. This is known as a short squeeze. After sitting around around $18 per share in the beginning of January, GameStop's stock value doubled in four days. It kept shooting higher before nearly doubling on January 26th, and then more than doubling again on January 27th to $347.51. On Thursday, January 28th, it gave back a chunk of those gains and finished the day at $193, down 44%. But it was still up an amazing 928% through the first few weeks of 2021. The Reddit investors are probably quoting Ben Affleck in the movie Boiler Room, talking about they say money can't buy happiness. Look at the effing smile on my face. Ear to ear, baby. Now, while short selling can be profitable, the practice is not without risk. Gains from short selling are limited, but the losses don't have a cap as there's no limit to how high a stock's prices may climb. Short selling is loathed by many CEOs, including Tesla's Elon Musk, talking about that short selling should be illegal. So where does this take us? There are many angles to talk about, but since we're dealing with money on this show, we'll take a look into the possible ramifications of this and how your money and somebody's investments could be affected in the future, since the majority of Americans' retirement funds can be affected by this. Disclaimer, this is just my personal opinion for entertainment and educational purposes only. Do not take my guidance as financial or investment advice. The story of investors sticking it to Wall Street took another turn when Robinhood began restricting the trades of GameStop AMC and other companies they were shorting. This then spurned many conspiracy theories that Wall Street itself was putting outside pressure on Robinhood. Several big names had backed the story, notably Senator Ted Cruz, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Reddit, Fox News, CNN, and the Winklevoss twins. What adds fuel to the fire is that Robinhood just like most major brokerages, does sell its users order flow to Citadel, which is a hedge fund that earlier had injected more than $2 billion into another hedge fund, Melvin Capital. And Melvin Capital got his ass kicked by another short position on GameStop. No coffee for you, Melvin Capital. Coffee is only for closers. There's a lot more to the story, and I recommend you read the full article on Yahoo Finance, and we'll drop the link in the description area below. But the CEO of Robinhood, and the CEO of Webull both refuted any conspiracies and simply stated that part of the process when it comes to extreme volatilities is to slow down the activity to allow the dust to settle per regulations. The only question which remains is why Robinhood and Webull suspended activity and why other similar brokerages like TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab didn't have to. There is now an investigation open with the Securities and Exchange Commission into this matter and also into market manipulation. So what's your point, Matt? Well, is this a one-off or could this possibly be a new way for investors 
to come together to drive up stock? Will there be new regulations that come out of this that prevents this type of behavior? Will this officially be the end of short selling? Well, here are my money smart thoughts. These are all very, very important questions and it's something that's hard to determine today what will happen. I do think that the status quo will not be the outcome. So I would expect regulations to curb either the brokerages to restrict trading on their own or the elimination of short selling. We learned in 2004 and in 2008, among many other times in history, how this negatively impacts the everyday Americans' retirement funds. So first off, this is a reminder to everybody to make sure your money isn't tied up all in volatility. There are plenty of options that limit risk, but still has an upside. My suggestion, you watch this video we shot a while back called How Millionaires Build Wealth Through Life Insurance. Even though Gordon Gecko thinks that greed is good, you have to be honest with yourself and determine if you can't afford to lose your money. Secondly, with restrictions eased, we can see a drive and rise in investments in things like gold or Bitcoin, or in my personal favorite, sports cards collectibles. Elon Musk even changed his Twitter bio to read hashtag Bitcoin, but gold, has been a worldwide used currency for thousands of years. I mean, if it's good enough to work for the three wise men, why don't it be good to use today? That kind of stability should be attractive to those that don't like to watch the rogue investors take on Wall Street. And lastly, there are a lot of politicians on both sides making a lot of noise. So I would imagine that this would be a blow to Robinhood and other brokerages. Now, if I'm a betting man, I'd like to say that the underdogs will most likely take down Wall Street. The people has spoken. Well, that's it for this episode. So there's a lot happening with this story. So make sure you keep your ears peeled to the street. If you haven't done so already, check out the last episode of the portfolio. Talk about the student loan cancellation of debt with President Biden with his executive order. Is it true? Go check it out. That being said, I love your thoughts. I love your comments. I love your questions. I love your feedback. Post them in the comments section below. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, guys, that's a wrap for this episode of the portfolio. And I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.